Can I take a doll? Recording is begun. So let's begin today with uh, everybody's favorite, some dungeon journal surfing. I think we'll change the format just a little bit for this because I think noticing what the uh, mythic mechanics are first uh, will help inform us when we are watching and thinking about the fight and the strats. So on mythic, we'll go over first boss here, a couple of different differences, differences. Um, so the webs form a hardened netting. I didn't notice this too much in the previous tests. Um, 30 seconds, they're stunned, um, doing a bit of damage, not very much, but I believe it just turns into an ad basically and you can cleave off of your friends. So if you wanna like clear a little bit, uh, you can do that. It doesn't seem to be too punishing. Um, which one is the one that I'm thinking of? It's the, oh yeah, Carnivorous Contest. Okay, so this is the one that will drag you in, and it does give you a debuff on Mythic, so we will need to split into groups of uh, two and two. So it says here, Ulgrax spews webs of the player and all allies within 10 yards. Uh, so we soak uh, 10 of us in Mythic, inflicting 17.3 uh, million nature damage split evenly amongst the players, binding them to Ulgrax. Bound players suffer damage uh, every second, a little bit of damage, not very much, and are pulled towards Ulgrax. The strength of this, uh, at which Ulgrax pulls players, is reduced for each bound player. I kind of like that, it's, it's a contest, right? It's like you're um, playing a tug of war with him uh, and he's trying to eat you. On Mythic difficulty, bound players will emerge from uh, carnivorous contests with battered and bruised. So you take 500% increased damage from this. Ulgrax will enter a contemptful rage if fewer than five players uh, soak it. So you need at least five in there and basically ideally 10 and 10 so that the pull is less intense, the soak is less intense, all of that. Um, yep, and this is all straightforward. So this is the main difference in P1 of the Mythic difficulty. And then they've done some other fundamental changes to all difficulties, but we'll go over that here in the video. Um, so that's basically that. We won't over uh, complexify it. Um, does so battered, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Does battered and bruised, does it fall off? Yes. No, uh, well, it actually, does. it might, but not, I I'm think there, there's only two of them during the phase anyway, um, until okay. he goes down, I believe. Um, sorry, Buckus, what were you going to say? I was going to say, because like, it feels weird that they, they list five as the number of players, if it's thing we have to do, like, more groups. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it was two per phase, if, if I remember, but I wasn't counting that much. Okay, so there is an extra add, uh, a different type of spawn in Mythic. It's just another guy comes out of the, the web eggs, and he has uh, spines, inflicts 1 million nature damage up to 8 enemies within 40 yards and adapts the caster's uh, bile glands, inflicting 10% additional damage per successful volley of bioactive spines. So it doesn't say that it's kickable or stoppable. Uh, maybe it just happens. Um, so like the longer it's up, the more damage it does. Uh, that could be a thing. We'll have to take a look at it. It didn't seem that noticeable in beta, but maybe it's just because uh, the, the testing wasn't all that good. Who just joined? I think Puma's here. Hi, Puma. Let me get you your points and who else is here? Somebody else joined, I think, earlier. Or am I tripping? Okay, whatever. I won't spend too much time on it. Okay, so yeah, and then the ads do a little bit of damage. Uh, then there's one more thing. I don't know if it will show me. Where is it? I don't know where it is, um, but they are afraid of the dude. So the ads will not get get within 30 yards 
of the man. Uh, I remember reading that a while ago, but I don't know where that is. So that comes into play a little bit later. Oh, here we you know, this is, we already saw that. They can trap you in webbing. Oh, in the intermission as well, because there's some that are still up. Wow, it looks like I did everything and I don't see that anymore. But anyway, just know that they might be afraid of him. Just triple checking on death, beetles. Delicacy inflicts nature damage every one second and slows movement speed by 20% when carried, and you're supposed to carry it over there. Okay, so we'll just go over this real quick um, in the video uh, and just see it in action. You guys can see this vid, right? Yep. Yep. So I believe this is just because players uh, got in the netting and I think they're just testing it out by clearing out the area so that it's available for this uh, contest. They do the soak here. There's one guy that wasn't in it, so that was nine players. And they're actually having some trouble fighting against it, even in a wind rush. So to be safe, we might drop it a little bit further away. Um, just something to be aware of. It would be nice if the more than nine players soaked it though that would help reduce the effectiveness so yeah it's interesting they cleared it with their bodies so that they could get the netting so you can see how much this pulls him in this is actually kind of scary imo it wow uh i don't think it should skip there or it does every time that's actually just built into the video that's not lag Okay. But yeah, he's fighting against it, and like, even with Burning Rush, it's actually, <laughs> he's not winning against that contest. Uh, so it's it's pretty serious for those of us that don't have like a lot of mobility. That'll be something to think about. And you can soak on the back side of the circle to give yourself a bit more time, and we can have like a gate down. Although I think the gate is best used in the intermission here. So uh, the thing that's new that we didn't see before um, is that when he spawns these eggs in the intermission, he's got a cast bar here, the swarm, and it shoots the eggs out. Notice that they only go to one side of the platform. They're over here on the right. Um, what that means is that when he's done charging in the intermission, he will actually spawn on the very opposite side every time of this. So he'll be over here um, when he comes out. So depending on tuning and how much damage we have to kill these, we may actually want to try to tank them a little bit closer to the middle. Although, like I said, I don't believe that they can be tanked within 30 yards. I see Disembowel, but I don't see the Mythic adds like AoE cast there. But yeah, see he's on the opposite side. And so now they've got to kill all these and run these, click on them and run them all the way over. They've got a lock gate which is decent but I think we could congregate them and kill them probably uh, closer and just make this phase suck less he doesn't take any damage during this portion of the phase uh, anyway he like takes I think like 99% reduced damage so running around isn't like doesn't feel too punishing but you do want to get out of this portion ASAP And then, like, notice he's got to do it twice. He's got to, like, run back and forth twice there. His healers suck. That's why he died. Just one heal. Definitely the problem. So how many of you guys are going to roll mages just based on those <laughs> meters? <laughs> this was, like, three weeks ago almost now. They've, they've done some tuning. And we'll continue to. But yeah, they, I think they kill this before the next intermission. Um, 
Yeah, that's his healer talent or his uh, hero talent. That's silly. Yeah, what's what's the point in doing anything else? <laughs> Holy moly! <laughs> Working as intended. Warlocks have gargoyle now. Hell yeah! Oh, do they? That's amazing. Good for them. I don't have gargoyle anymore. I'm not a good one. So really? Now they're opting not to clear the webs and then just use the green to clear it, which I think is the the proper play. I think they were just testing yeah. some stuff and seeing what's up. Yeah. And then we could just mark a spot. And then if you're like slow, you, you can play towards the back side of that soak. I think that'll help you out a lot. That pull didn't seem as bad. Weird. I wonder if more people got in it. Weirdly enough, yeah, because people are dead. Yeah. But yeah, there's not too much to think about there, to be honest. It's just going to be a question of whether, like, tanks can survive and you can kill the guys and like also like just knowing um just knowing a little bit about um whether or not you need to spec into any aoe talents like that sort of thing probably for our first kill it's actually going to be proper to do aoe talents because if we um don't kill those little ads then it, then it's over but we can probably run through like an additional phase fairly safely because it doesn't ramp up over time so just it, slow roll it yeah probably like first kill you know like low gear is to just make sure that we got the intermission under control but yeah so we spawn like a bunch of little ads here like let's say i i believe in the um or whatever right um and then he comes up over here and they can't they get feared from him if they get within 30 yards but i think you can like let's say we drop like a marker or something and get like closer if the raid this is just kind of my thinking early on here like if the raid congregates around uh star however his charge during this phase a lot of them will go through the star area so you kind of have to like dodge out then then congregate back and if we have enough time where we don't need to like stand in the middle of them right and let them congregate on us and kill them like that quickly if we just stand here and let them come to us and kill the ones that are here they'll all like come in here and we can just we can just kill them right there there's not like any casters or anything like that um, and that could shorten the phase overall um, I forget. Can they be hard, 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 hard? I don't know. I haven't seen them do that. We can. I mean, I feel like if you could morphins them together, I mean, this, the phases look like they're far enough apart that you know Marza could just group them all together and you could blow them up, right? Can we see if? Any okay, so they get they get Gorfins grasped right there. Yeah. Yeah, so and then like even grippy hands during that part could be really good if we're standing on star and getting more of them close to star quickly. And then like a later Gorfins. Um, as long as we are together as a group, it stops that from becoming too chaotic. Uh, it, it gets there, it's not perfect, right? Because he will come charging through and you have to dodge out of that. Um, however, you might you might get a little bit lucky. And even if there's the charge, I don't think it's so bad that we don't like try to find a point where we're gonna, we're gonna congregate around anyway. Like just kind of like a center of gravity sort of idea. Um, you know how many, um, how many they had to feed him before he phased? That was a lot. He had to run back and like do it twice. Um, well, I'm, I'm assuming that the healers aren't going to be like waiting on him right like there, there's a two second dot that was going out when he was screaming so healers need to be like healing right. what i'm thinking is you know healers need to heal every i i know crazy um banna won't have any mana during this phase it's too late in the fight <laughs> it's like two minutes in it's after the first 20 seconds <laughs> um so you know maybe the the thought is like have specific people that are like assigned to go twice right like okay you've got lots of mobility or whatever 
Um, mm. You can use a, so a gate to get there for the first one, and then, you know, use... <laughs> so swabbles. Yeah, it, like, so disengage all... like, four of them? Yeah, sure, whatever. Um, it, well, more like movement abilities, right? Like, he doesn't take any damage in that phase. You just want to get it done as quick as possible. So, um, I don't know if mages still have, like, 900 blinks, but, like, that kind of thing. Yep. It's while you were talking there that sparked something in me. War is that it, what's interesting is it seems like the wind rush is super valuable here, or like roars. However, they're also super valuable in the intermission. But if you use too much in the intermission, you won't have it up for like a contest here. So, and that's really important because people definitely die there. So, like spacing out and just planning your um, your movement actually will be important. It's not such of a fight that I don't think we need to plan and, like, have markers for, like, all the AMZs and defensives and, like, that sort of thing. Uh, however, the movement, I think, should be very well planned out, and and then we'd, we'd be in good shape. Also, to answer your question, um, mages do still have a million blinks. Oh, nice. I mean, it is a first boss, though. So I think... Um... You know, a, a lot of it could probably be covered by um, evokers too. Yeah. I don't remember what the ability is called that gives you an extra Rescue. use of your. No, no, no. Wernstone. It's uh, like well. Yeah, it's Wernstone. Not well. Yeah, Wernstone. Yeah. Um, Rescue would be amazing for you here, Cole. But uh, also, whatever the one is oh, that yeah. gives you an extra charge of your movement ability. Yep. Hover, 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 hover. There you uh, go. And there that's you go. Not Hover gives you extra movement ability? It's called, like... Time Spiral. Time well, Time Spiral, spiral but time you spiral. do hover yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you hover back. Thanks, Buckus. That was what we were looking for. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, evokers yeah, could be spiral. super valuable Mission for could... them. Yeah, cracked in this. And, yeah, if if there are certain classes... Like, if not everybody needs to run two, then, then so be it. And you're probably right. I think... It's interesting because this is a long way. This is like, what, 60 some yards across the platform. So if you're killing them here, it's no bueno, but it's like 40 yards if you kill them here, which means you would like always be in range of the healers for sure. So like healers could plant, you know, if you killed them all here, you know, and people were running back and forth, then healers could easily plant like in here and get people that were out here. And the faster people or slower people that are, you know, mixed up. So if you can congregate them and you don't have to just get on top of them and kill them ASAP, Insta, um, that would be so much better. But I don't know if we can get away with that. It, a lot of that just depends on how it's tuned and how they do damage. Things like this often surprise me on these first bosses too. It's like sometimes it's like, oh, we actually can't do that because if we don't kill as they're spawning, if we don't kill them as they're spawning, there's like too many and then the tanks die. You know, or something like weird like that, where it's like, okay, we just got to, we just got to kill them. So so much of it's just dependent upon tuning. That, that's difficult to say. But if it's closer than this, we don't need to use as many movement abilities, and we can have them for the contest. I think this is a really good use of gate. The contest, I don't know, is is not as great for gate, but it's fine. Um, whereas like the wind rush and roar, I think, are better for the uh, the contest and P one. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, a lot of that just kind of just depends on the tuning and like how much gear we have at that point um, for the first kill. Uh, and then, of course, it's just going to be chill meme fight uh, after the first kill from there on out. Hungry boy is trying to eat you and he wants to be fed. And that's about it. Cool. If anybody has anything else they want to go around that fight, but uh, if not, we'll move on to the next, the next one. And I think we'll still just keep on doing two per night. So this this doesn't seem like it'll take us very long. Okay, um, we'll go to BB Horror uh, and see what's different on Mythic. So. Right away, um, it's Blood Curdle, it looks like. So the Bloodbound Horror transfuses black blood into each player. 
that causes them to erupt after five seconds, inflicting 1.7 million uh, shadow damage to players within six yards. Uh, so it is a spread mechanic, and it looks like each player, so every single player in the raid gets it um, when you go out. Now this is a fight mm -hmm. where positioning is important um, at certain times, so having a spread mechanic and um, a burst of damage at the same time can be um, add quite a bit of difficulty. And I think, I think that's it. Um, in terms of the difficulty, obviously the tuning is uh, much higher. Let's see, is there... Just the spread? It's just the spread, I believe. Yep. And I think... This seemed like it could be a little hectic anyway, right? With all the ads and stuff, and the um, the beams. Yeah, ad fights, depending on how they're tuned, right, uh, can get much more difficult very quickly just because the ads like have more hp or something I mean, you need to get them uh down in position like really well for for where they are a lot of this i think has to do with the tanks and how well they understand the beams and the, like the players understanding them and how we can regroup um afterwards but we'll watch a little bit of it just to give us a reminder um of how the fight goes and you can see the mythic mechanic in, in action. It's pretty much the same. So, Group one and two, get ready. so there's the mythic mechanic. So My everybody's got a spread. So the first group is down. We didn't see it. They are splitting the whole raid. So they're basically like on opposite sides, Same. 10 and 10. Um, it seems like something you can do, although I don't know that that's oh, necessarily ideal. But it does help with this spread mechanic, right? Because that's six yards is pretty big. 20 of you doing six yards is quite a lot. I think you want to get out of the ad phase as fast as you can, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't... Well, do you know that it ends faster, or does it just have a set duration? Let's check the debuff here when he gets hit. So this is nasty, right? They're getting the frontal, and they have the mythic mechanic. So the mythic mechanic hits, boom. And then frontal hits, boom. Yeah, so it looks like it's 40 seconds either way, I think, swabs. Because you can hit the boss, you can hit the boss even when you're in in the down phase, when you can see him. Yeah, but I think you want to get out of being having the ads as fast as you can. Oh yeah, for sure. So you don't want to because don't they add an ad each time? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's true. So it could ramp up. I don't know if it has a cap, um, or if it just keeps on going and adds them. So the smallest guys are the priority. So it's like the little guys. And then the guys that spawn the little guys. Um, the other one is just one that the tank picks Good. up and kicks. Uh, and tanks the so tank buster know. and it's not as big of a deal. Everyone has to run out of the raid now. So I think I I I or ideally we're grouped up for this. And this is super uh, scripted, by the way. So here, a lot of raid damage. So you'd, you'd likely, it'd be, you'd like to stack. Uh, this, that would be much better at this point. And then spread for this. They go down. So it seems like at the very least, like there are these islands. There are like four little islands, and you kind of want like your group to have a, a separate island, but you can be on like adjacent islands. Would be fine, and you you all have enough space to spread in those. So far, have you seen that it's rotated this islands, or did you see a random one? Uh, never mind. Never mind. They're opposite sides. The ads. Uh, yeah. So this is pretty nasty. They went down over here on the far side, but they have a guy over here that's spawning ads. So having a plan for somebody that can like get across the beams and do some CC on ads 
um, and knock them back and like that sort of thing. Um, hunters and mages um, for sure would be extremely valuable there. Uh, even like an evoker with like their knockback knockups could get over there and like uh, slow it down until the group has a chance to get over and like kill everything. Um, again, depending on how it's tuned. And how early are the? How early can you see the ads? Like it, it might be just a a react thing too, right? Yeah, well, like pay pay attention to whatever the whatever island you've marked it as star or whatever. Right. Um, you can see it here. So these are the. This is where it telegraphs, um, mm -hmm. the, where the ads are. So these are like the little ones that spawn the little baddies. Um, whereas the one with the big circle over its head is where the tank wants to be and the group wants to be to be able to go down. Um, so they'll they'll have to be over there. Where but somebody needs to make it over here so that yeah those little guys don't go in there. I'm not sure why they started over here. This seems really bad. Now he's like having to go <laughs> through all this and over here. Made it work though. Cutter beam. Make sure you're CCing the little ads downstairs, guys. Oh, the spread into the beam. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. He I, barely got out of that. I was dead if I was in there. Hopefully, that... hopefully there's no one over there killing it. Oh, I got the Have to run out. So yeah, you see they're like they're kind of just ticking um, out. A, a lot of this is just positioning and <laughs> like yeah, control. Yeah. Uh, you need a taunt when you come back up top and bait the beam. So some ideas going around to this. I'm, like, based off where I, am, you know? I think I'm what's really back. important is that yeah, the group so kind of recongregates up. afterwards. Because that big gore splatter down, where yeah. you need to run out happens after the second group comes up. So there's like two down phases, and then there's that gore splatter, and then it resets. So if there was some kind of convention here. Mm -hmm. Where, like, the down group here is being chased by the beam, right? Um, if the convention was, let's say, the top group chases the beam, then you guys are on, like, either side of the beam, but you're close, right? So, like, this one this one gets pushed, the bottom group gets pushed, and then the top group is pushing the beam. Um, something, like, along those lines so that we, we could, like, be congregated already by the time this goes off because I think oh, or splatter yep happens well, like right after you come out. out and we could almost say left and right groups so you'd run yeah, like back in uh, and then when we do this spread here it would just be like you know group one is like left and group two is right maybe that might not work though because of where the ads are spawning so with the timing. When I go down, taunts is what it is, yeah. That was pretty quick. Yeah, Let's see if we can watch out. that timing again. So they're out for the splatter. I'm in peril. Okay. Yeah, the ads are walking. Uh, uh, you need a taunt when you come two, back up top and one. bait the beam. Like you can control where the beam spawns. And, it's, and so the mythic mechanic. Like going just and I'm, and like they can see, it happens at the same time. It looks like they can see the ads as soon as the mythic mechanic goes out. out. <laughs> yeah, the ads are There's the uh, ad. Okay, no, it's a little earlier. The beam. Like you <gasps> the so the group could actually be running, like the group one could be running to and spread yeah, um, uh, at this point here the before the blood curdle. <laughs> which I don't know where it is. It would be on the other side. So group one would be running to the other side with tank one um, already at this point. I don't think you're taunting when you come up because it's like going just wherever I'm, like based off where I am, you know? That's also nasty too, just something to be aware of as far as like your survivability, depending on tuning. Is so this blood curdle, right, or this gore splatter happens, then you have like this nasty dot on you, right? 
So they're ticking with this dot. That's what that, that is, it looks like. Then they're still ticking. They're still ticking. Then this mythic mechanic comes out. And if you're in group one here, you ran, you have this mythic mechanic that hits you, then this frontal hits you. So like that's that's a big danger moment. If we can be really topped there and then just like watch our health as we're moving across, I think that would help. This seems to me to be like one of those fights where like we can definitely control it and the boss will die as long as like the wheels don't come off, right? Like we have enough people up to be able to control the ads. Um, so yeah, I think there's something like that to it, but I don't know. What, what do you guys think in terms of like any sort of convention where like we could get, keep the group sort of more together and have a, you know, like a plan that makes sense for that. I'm trying to think of like something that would work pretty much always. So if you've got like, let's say group one is the teal group. Uh, group one, and then we've got, what color should group two be? That's easy to see. Orange maybe, orange isn't too bad. That's different. Group two. Um, make them a little bit bigger so if we we're gonna have cutters here but let's say we find a way to do the cutters and we stay together if if we see so group one's going to be the one that wants to go down so they watch for that that tank ad wherever it's spawning I believe is the watcher harbingers are the one that spawns the little ads but the watcher and so in this case it was like over here then yeah group one would just leave after the gore splatter but what would complicate that I guess is is if the tank ad spawns here on the group and I guess just group two gets the heck out. But it'd be good if there was like a bit of a convention of like which way they went to get out. Um, so that they don't like split the group across the frontal that's going to be well, coming then, across. Uh, the cutters go, just go with the cutters. So counterclockwise, right? Uh, yeah, those are always counter, but there haven't been any cutters yet at this point. We're just getting the group down, one group down while one stays up, um, while group, group two stays up. So the cutters will be wonder, at, after this happens. I wonder if this spawns a random or not. Like if they're not, then it's it's just having group one run to where the spawn is going to be, right? You just have a list. That's interesting. I know that the Harbingers, like these these nasty boys that spawn the horrors, are completely random. It seems like, though, one will spawn like on the same island as the Watcher uh, for you. And then uh, the others are random. So you could get lucky and have like another one on the island and then the other one like kind of close by. But you could also get like, r like super ass Harbinger spawns like that. So the other consideration is um, like tank movement as far as like spotting the watches. If if the if the tank is able to move quickly, um, and the and the group whatever you know group the tank is assigned to is able to move with them quickly, you can have the uh, the frontal just like always on the top of the watcher after it spawns. Mm hmm. Yeah, you you mean the cutter, right? No, I so the gore splatter goes off, right? Yep. The ad comes out, and then the and then the frontal happens, right? Right. So if you can if if you can have whatever group it is on top of the watcher like immediately, um, 
or where they need to be immediately, then they can DPS as soon as the uh, as soon as the frontal goes out, and the chances of them, you know, having to stay or get hit by the beam are, are less because they've got more uptime. Yep, for sure. Yeah, that's that's why you look for the um, that's why you look for that spawn. I think. Yeah. Every time, yeah. and then yeah, the tank and the group will run to that spawn. They didn't do that very well every time here. So yeah, they should be here. This is group two, he's in group two. So they should be over here and it looks like that they are. Um, however, they just, they don't do a very good job of like regrouping afterwards. And I think that's what, what gets them. Yeah, that's just a nasty like personal moment. Like after the um, blood curdle goes okay, off and then you take the frontal to the face this is a really nice spawn by the way okay. with, for them to get two harbingers right by them and then the other one was here instead I think I pulled this one. they get another blood curdle well down here and okay that stuff on the ground actually does hurt, by the way, quite a bit. So, like, jumping across and not, like, walking in it, it's actually good. Everyone has to run out of the raid now. This goes off at a defensive on your tank. So let's watch this one here. Okay, so they see right away where to be. So they could come back, be stacked, and then like we see where it is. Group one gets here. Like if you know you're in group one, you have this island. And then like group two, let's say the convention is group two always goes right and takes the right island or something like that. Um, I could see something like that working pretty well. Yeah, because cutters are going to come eventually. Sure so you want to be tank, avoiding that square. shit. Oh yeah, of course. But yeah, the control that is on the opposite side. The second tank can control where the cutters are going to be. So they've got the frontal here Put now. The they go down. And now you place it. And this is a question I've been thinking about this for a while. Some of this has to do with like how long the ads are up. But like let's see, can I make can I make a cutter beam here real quick? That makes sense. Let's say it's like that, right? We could just make it be a single other thing. And for 10, good looking beam right there. Thank I'll you, tell you what. That's the beam. What is it? It's like blue. It's like dark blue. We'll make that work. Okay, so. Like. So it spins counterclockwise every time. So it'll go this way. And you want to buy your group as much time. It always spawns off of his flanks. So the tank, if the tank was here, then it would spawn like that, like for group two. So in this case, uh, let's say I said group two is on the right. And so then it would be facing here for where it would spawn. Uh, you have some some time and it would spin this direction so if they could if group one can nuke these is this better than let's say is this better than if group two actually just after the frontal gets back over here and then you've got the cutters that just spawn like this because wouldn't this buy them this one wouldn't this buy the most time for if you've got like the the hit squad right that's going over here to try and cc and like kill the little ads while the main group is killing over here because what i'm worried about is that if you do it like this right to um or this let's say to to buy group one the most time then it may start to rush the hit squad Possibly. <laughs> and so, like, it's been a lot on like the tuning. Like, how long is it actually going to take? Like, how? I don't know. Yeah, because this is good, right? If they die really quickly, because yeah.
because then both of them can just kind of basically kill him. But if they're slow, then what would be the thing you'd want to do? If they're slow, you'd want to buy the you'd want to buy the most time you could for the uh, first group, so the group that's here, which means like you'd want it here, so that it spawns, and then this first group doesn't have to move, which means group two instead of being here, they would shift just a little bit to the right, and put it, put the beam that's on the left of the boss like just in front of it or even like or even on them isn't even that bad because it moves it like will move away from them immediately you know um as long as players are paying attention that's not that bad the animation for it's pretty good pretty well telegraphed as long as you're not asleep so yeah i think it's it's something like that yeah i, th I like that idea around tuning so you'd, just, you'd, you'd play it pretty simple. The only reason that I can think of that you wouldn't put the group back, like, right, you dodge out from the frontal, and then you put the group